the headline that uh, we've seen Keaton Energy uh, move from explorer, developer to producer is really, uh, you know, what's caught everybody's attention today. Mm -hmm. And reflecting in the year that uh, we've, uh, reflecting that position is the fact that we've seen a 7.2 million rand profit from your first coal sales mm -hmm. already having been made. So run us through the year that was because that transition has had to have been a pretty exciting. Absolutely. It's, it's no mean feat to, to start to drill your first borehole on a Greenfields exploration site just four years ago. And then on the 2nd of December to, to sell your first washed coal. We're very proud of that. Our results, re of course, reflect the, the beginnings of our conversion to a producer. We just did four months of production and on our five seam product alone, uh, today, or this week rather, we will start delivering in earnest to Eskim as well. Uh, of course, sales being made primarily to the domestic uh, market mm. at this stage. What demand are you catering to locally? Well, we have two very different products um, coming from our Van Gatfontein mine. We have a, a low contaminant coal, uh, which sells at a premium into the metallurgical market, the five seam coal. And then we've entered into a 10 year uh, sorry, a tenure contract to supply coal to Eskim. Mm -hmm. um, that's from our two and four seam. That'll start, uh, the deliveries will start this week. We also, of course, during the year, negotiated to acquire 74% interest in Leo Mining and Exploration, which operates in a mine, an anthracite mine down mm -hmm. in KwaZulu Natal. Of course, we've got uh, progress still being made in that regard, uh, you know, with regards to that acquisition. Mm. Uh, what kind of strides are being made in that regard? Because that would be very telling of your production capacity moving forward. No, of course, um, we've entered into the agreement. Um, we've provided some support to keep the operation going. We await the Competition Commission's approval and we await the uh, Minister of, of Mineral Resources approval for the change of control of, um, of, of uh, Leo Mining and Exploration. To what extent does that then open you up to export opportunities? Well, that is an export mine. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Leo Valkrans Colliery has been exporting uh, anthracite since 2003. Uh, just taking a look at the challenges you face in catering to that export mm -hmm. market, though, I mean, infrastructure has got to be key where reliability in transportation mm -hmm. and rail networks, for example, uh, is front and center. What's your reading of our status in that regard and our infrastructure capacity to, you know, to cater to a company like, um, like Keaton Energy's growth prospects? Well, obviously, the reason why Leo Mining and Exploration was of great interest to us was, it, was because it had already secured that infrastructure. It was a participant in the Quattro program. It's been able to export already. Getting into exports is very difficult um, from a standing start. And that's why this, uh, this acquisition was attractive to us. Of course, we wait for uh, that acquisition to become a done deal. In the meantime, what kind of uh, production capacity are we looking uh, to that's catering to that local demand you highlighted? Well, Van Gatfontein project uh, sold its first product, as I said earlier, in mm -hmm. early December. We start delivering to Eskim this week. By the end of this financial year, we should have delivered over 2 million tons of coal to our domestic customers, principally, of course, Eskim but also to the consumers of five seam coal in the metallurgical industry. So we, we, we're going very aggressively from being an explorer to producing over two million tons a year. Uh, in your analysis, I came through some reading that there's possible headwinds that we face here, specifically uh, p pertaining to the four and two seam plant, because it mm -hmm. was on track uh, to develop uh, you know, a ramp up commitment to off thermal coal to ESCOM by the end of July. But uh, that may be facing, as I say, some headwind. Yes, there was an incident, an engineering incident, we've termed it, um, during pre-commissioning on the plant, where we had a, a support structure for a bin collapse. Uh, we've come up with a, a mitigation plan. We are in production at the moment while we rehabilitate that support structure. Um, uh, it's the joys of mining, I'm afraid. <laughs> How long before that comes, uh, you know, becomes fully um, on track? To we, hope, we hope to be, at the, by the end of July, we should have rehabilitated that structure and be back to normal. Of course, uh, when it comes to demand that's out there, how are you uh, reading the, the current scenario? Because, you know, there was initially, or at one stage, uh, a fear that we would see a move to cleaner, greener energy. And with the nuclear crisis that, mm. uh, p uh, that played out in Japan, uh, things seems to have to, uh, changed somewhat? Look, I don't know where we're going to go long term, but what I can say is the next 30 years is going to see South Africa remain a coal, principally a coal-based energy country. If it is nuclear, it's going to take at least 30 years to, to replace coal. If it is other um, sources of energy like renewable energy, I think it will take as long. So there's plenty of opportunity for the likes of ourselves to continue to sell 
coal into the domestic market. In the face of what kind of competition, especially from a junior miners' perspective? There are enormous barriers to entry growing all the time for entrance into the market. First of all, where do you get your capital? Mm -hmm. And I think there's a, I'm very concerned that South Africa is not going to be able to attract the kind of capital that's necessary with the regulatory environment and the policy noises being made at the moment. Um, then how do you negotiate the environmental regulations, which are getting tougher and tougher all the time? Um, so so there, there are lots of barriers to entry and those people who can get through those barriers and produce coal, I think there'll be a ready market for it. Of course, so when you're looking at players entering the, fo uh, entering the market, they're, they're looking at things like a regulatory environment, mm -hmm. but also on where that coal price is heading. What's your outlook for the coal price for this year? For export um, coal prices, look, at that, that's beyond really my my area of expertise. But for domestic prices, the fact remains that we remain quite stressed from a coal supply point of view domestically within South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, there's talk just in this week of South Africa having to attract 100 billion rands worth of investment into domestic coal supply um, operations. Um, that, to attract that kind of capital in competition with mining projects all over the world, we've got to get our policy environment sorted out. We've got to stop appearing in an uncertain environment. And the prices have to earn a reasonable return on that capital. Of course, when it comes to your own targets, uh, you've got a longer-term target of becoming a mid-tier coal producer. Timeline uh, in place to hitting that target? Well, look, um, right now, this year, we want to break the 2 million ton um, produced target that we've set for ourselves. We want to complete the deal with... Uh, with Leo Mining and Exploration. We want to then consolidate that production with ours, and then there are some development projects there that we'd like to pursue. So if a mid-tier producer produces five million tons, we'd probably be five years off. 